so everything starts from a, a little ID and basically it's all my ideas comes from uh, reading novels, uh, listening to podcasts, um, driving my car, watching a movie. Um, but then it's only a, a very simple ID. One image can be an ID to create a whole scene from, from a movie. So um, it started from found footage, uh, images I found in uh, databases or in magazines. Um, but now it could also be that I read a sentence in a book and that I think, okay, this, this can be a beautiful starting point for a drawing or even for a film or for a photograph or for a sculpture. So, and the good thing is that it's, that when it's, I truly believe that it always comes from this very, um, very small thought. And then because time goes over it, it becomes larger and larger and you begin developing it. Uh, I never had a good idea, which was like a very complicated thing just by lying in the couch and thinking about it and overthinking it and making it more and more uh, complicated for me it works like i have this small idea and then i begin working in the studio and then the idea get, gets more complicated Fifteen years ago i began drawing charcoal but soon i discovered that um I wanted to broaden up my work in terms of media. Uh, and then I started making decors, installations. Then later they became sculptures. Uh, then I started making ceramics, ashtrays. Then in the decors, I started uh, producing a film. So the medium of film came um, also um, in the foreground. And then recently I've been making photographs too, and then the small color pencil drawings. So. And I like this idea that uh, I can enter the studio every day and, and just think uh, what I would like to be doing that particular day. And then work on the film a little bit more, work on the drawings a bit more. And every medium has its own intensity and its own rhythm and its own uh, pace. The medium charcoal for me is important because it's the basic of drawing. Uh, so I really started out as a draftsman and I wanted to delve into this medium of drawing and make it more autonomous. And then charcoal was a very obvious choice because it's the basic of, of this medium. And then the good thing about this charcoal is that it's black and white and that it refers to uh, a world that has been, like a world in the, in the, in the past. So all my uh, work is, is like a fake autobiography. So I tell a story of a life I've never lived, but it's the black and white has, has an advantage that it, uh, it refers to, to images of the past and it has a documentary feeling in it. So when we think of the past, my generation still does think in black and white images. It refers to a time that, that has been uh, gone. My entire work is a, a fake autobiography. It tells you a story about a life I've never lived in the past, so it makes sense for me that it's uh, that it has this kind of documentary aspect and this documentary feeling. Uh, for me, it's very important because I tell this story, this fake autobiography, that there is text involved because I can guide myself and guide the viewer uh, into this story and really specify uh, the specific place of the image in the story. Before I started using charcoal, I, I made these colored uh, pencil drawings, but this is like 20 years ago when I was a student. And it was because I didn't have a studio, so I was limited in space and I wanted to make small drawings. But then as, as I explained, I wanted to make the draw, uh, medium of drawing more autonomous. And one way to do it is to enlarge uh, the picture. So then I started making these huge drawings and then the colored pencils were not suited for it anymore. So I changed to to charcoal until two years ago I rediscovered by accident like an old drawing and I was struck by the the private character of it and and the freedom it had to to work in with these color pencils so I installed my drawing table again uh, and it felt very good like a, like a good energy to be drawing at a table and it also has the huge benefit that I can draw wherever I want now. So if I'm traveling, uh, I can make a drawing or I can make a drawing outside or I don't have to be here in the studio to make these, these large scales work. And, and I like this idea of uh, 
having a more private character too in, in my work uh, because it tells you something about this medium of drawing too at uh, a small scale. I was always intrigued by, by the difference between reality and fiction. I can think about it uh, for years and years now. Um, and I think in every fiction uh, there is a reality, but also in every reality there is a fiction. And I very much like uh, the way Werner Herzog once described it. When he's making a documentary, he says he's making more like a fictional movie. And when he's making a fictional movie, he's more making a documentary movie. So there is a very fine line in what we perceive as reality or as fiction. Uh, and on this line, I want to concentrate my work. For yeah, the making of the, vi uh, of the movie The Villagers, there was one important rule for me, and that was never to leave the studio. So we all filmed it here inside the studio, which meant that we had to build like a whole parallel universe. And this parallel universe, I wanted to be handmade because it becomes more sculptural in a way. Um, for example, when there is a hamburger, the guy eats a hamburger in the diner. I want this hamburger to be sculpted, uh, and I don't want a real hamburger. I want a like the idea of a, of a hamburger. Um, and I like this abstracted uh, reality, um, this kind of reduced reality. Uh, this is what I'm interested in. I just want to make my own work here in my studio, uh, visualize my own world, and then hopefully there will be a common ground with, with people abroad and, and that they can find links and interesting things in it and, and delve into it and get a little bit lost in this world. Uh, it's not about giving answers, it's about, about creating something and visualizing something and, and about a viewer that, that will be able to get lost in this world. <laughs> 